Okay, good morning, Year 10. As always, we begin in prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Late one afternoon, the composer Beethoven visited a shoemaker standing on, in the shop, waiting to have his shoes mended. Beethoven heard some music being played on a piano in the back room of the shop. Beethoven smiled, knowing that music was one of his own compositions. It's my daughter who's playing, said the shoemaker, but she can't play very well because she is blind and has to play from memory. May I play the piano for your daughter? I am a musician myself, asked Beethoven. Certainly, said the shoemaker, not knowing who his customer was. Beethoven slowly rehearsed the music with the girl. They began to practice the other pieces he had written. Although the girl was not aware that her teacher was, in fact, the composer. The time went quickly and Beethoven didn't realize that hours had passed. Then he noticed the way that the moonlight had begun to stream its gentle light through the window of the room. Beethoven returned home. He couldn't get to sleep, but thought of how the girl was disabled by blindness, struggling to do her best, whilst others took sight and talents for granted. He thought of the great joy that music brought her. He remembered the room in which they had played the music and the way in which the moonlight streamed through the open window. He knew that whilst he could see the moonlight, she could not. Beethoven got out of bed and started to play the piano, expressing his feelings for music. What he produced is thought by many to be the most touching pieces of music. In memory of the girl, he called his new piece, The Moonlight Sonata. On this day in 1802, the music of Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata was published. So let us pray. Lord, you have watched me grow in my mother's womb. And I know that you have, you, you love all that you have made. Help me to transform my difficulties and disabilities into opportunities for growth. Shine the light of your spirit on me that I may grow as the person you are calling me to be. Inspire me to develop the talents you've given me for the benefit and the service of those people you have placed in my life. May each of us become a blessing for others. Amen. St. Marcel and Champagne, Mary, our good mother, and may we always remember to pray for one another. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so our pastoral lesson today um, will be uh, of two, uh, two different natures. Uh, of, first up, we'll have the um, SRC speeches and a bit of voting. And then we'll move into uh, with Mrs. Light and Miss Andersich uh, from VPG talking about work placement. Okay, uh, just before we get started on those two things, I'd just like to remind you your study skills booklet uh, was meant to be due this Friday, but due to the number of large number of absences, I'm going to push that through to next Friday. So it gives you another week. That should be regarded as homework. So you should be doing or completing that work as homework. It should be in your diary. So by next Friday, you will have had three weeks to complete that, which is ample time. Okay, uh, bags and lockers. So we have had an incident where bags have been thrown around uh, the lockers or the locker area. Uh, I would just suggest to you that if the bag is not your bag, then don't touch it. Uh, it's pretty simple. Okay, so if your locker, uh, if you have your bag on top of your locker, then um, yeah, someone else doesn't have the right to come along and move it off. Okay, so there should be a bag on top of the lockers and a bag on the ground uh, opposite the locker on the ground. And that's the way the lockers should be uh, cared for. The other thing is locks. Uh, there's still a number of lockers that don't have locks on them. It is your responsibility to purchase a lock and put it on your locker. So I will be checking that uh, very shortly and reminding you if you don't have one of those. Okay, your behavior uh, in general has been excellent. So I um, to commend you on, on that or your performance so far this year. Uh, however, there has been a, a couple of incidents. I'd just like to remind you, I like to always operate on my gut feeling. Generally, your gut will tell you if you've done the right thing or not. So I'd like you to start thinking about that. And uh, if, you know, if your gut feeling is it's not the right thing, then maybe you need to say, hey, hang on a moment, uh, engage your brain and, and don't do it. Or, or make sure it doesn't happen a second time if you've done the wrong thing. So that's a little challenge for you. Okay, so SRC. So this year we have three nominations for SRC in year 10. Uh, 
So one of those guys will miss out, unfortunately. However, we will listen to those three speeches in a moment via Zoom. Uh, I would say to you that the SRC position, we, we are taking that very seriously. Okay, obviously the, the three nominations are keen on leadership positions down the track. So that's why they have uh, nominated themselves. So uh, I think it's really important um, that you have a good think about this and it's not a popularity vote. Okay, it's, it's best, it, who can best serve the year level? Okay, in saying that, I'd like to ask our, our first um, nomination to come forward and that would be Sahan Washama uh, Dewayalage. Good morning, gentlemen, and good morning, teachers and fellow Mena Saints. My name is Sahan Roshimana, and most of you know me as Sahan Washing Machine from Grade 8. But let's cut the chase. I'm here to believe that I can withhold the responsibilities of what it is to be an SRC representative for the Year 10 cohort. Back in Year 8, I was given the opportunity to be an SRC member. And because of that, I received some ideas on how we can make your time in this school a better experience. And therefore, I wish to endorse these ideas to the best of my ability. What is the meaning of being an SRC representative? Well, it is expressing leadership and showing your peers that you can be trusted and you can contribute towards service and to make sure that your grade can join into as many opportunities that the school offers. The thing is, it's not my ideas or changes that matter, it's yours, because you're also students in this grade and you will also encounter these changes. So if you want something to happen, I'm happy to help. The SRC is no leader, but a representative who values his peers more than himself and gives up time to make your time in this grade the best it can be. I believe I can uphold these values. I try to help people by helping them understand their work and try to join into as many clubs slash activities that arise because they could be for a good cause. I could further extend these actions as by being SRC. Service is a huge part of our lives at Saints, and therefore, we must be part of the service. Any form of service can bring change. Therefore, I will try to join into as many service opportunities to represent us grade 10s. So to end, cooperation with you to make your grade 10 time your favorite year is my goal. So vote me for your SRC for 2022. So thank you, Sahan. Our second speaker will be Riley Huberts. Thank you, Riley. Good morning, teachers and Mena Saints. I stand before you as a year 10 SRC candidate for 2022. For those who are unfamiliar, my name is Riley Hubert, as most of you will know, and I've been a boarding student at Saints since 2020. You may ask what attributes a candidate requires to process to be an effective SRC representative to his peers. I believe a successful candidate needs to be authentic in character and have an established reputation for being honest, respectful, and being a good mate to a brother in need. When I reflected on these qualities, I felt I feel that I lived out and championed those qualities since becoming a young man of saints in my day-to-day -day life. Let me elaborate. Firstly, I value my, the education my parents have gifted me through their hard work and commitment to my future. Two, I believe that being an SRC candidate is to always project a positive attitude to be an effective role model. Throughout my years here at Saints, I valued the brothers that have extended a compassionate hand to me and others. It is from these experiences that I would always treat all with respect and compassion. This is where I would like to pay everyone back and put into the school community and wider within the position of SRC. Only your vote can get me there. And I trust the majority of you will vote for me. Thank you, gentlemen. And I wish the other candidates good luck. Thank you, Riley. And our final speaker is Jack Brunetto. Good morning, gentlemen. Today, as you would expect, I am standing here before you as a possible candidate for the role of SRC. 
alongside the other fine gentlemen beside me. I assure you I will take the role very seriously and try my best to improve your college experience. As your representative, I would make sure to hear your ideas out and ensure that they are heard during the meeting so that you might have a say in bettering our school. I am hardworking, dedicated and organized and would actively participate in the role were it given to me. I have already participated in a multitude of service opportunities in St. Augustine's, including Relay for Life and the Binny Sleepover, Sleep Out. However, I would love to further aid in these endeavors and more, being involved in all facets of the college that I possibly can be, as well as helping in planning future events. I'm putting my name forward for this role because I believe that I would be a good candidate and would try to represent you in the best way I possibly could. I would work only in your best interest and ensure that anything that could be improved will be. I would appreciate it if you could keep me in mind while you're voting, as well as keeping in mind who you would want representing you. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, please acknowledge the boys when they uh, head back to homerooms. So you will now be asked to vote. I will share the voting link with you on the year 10 team. Okay, so that's it for SRCs. Um, we'll hand over to Mrs. Light now to talk to you about work placement. Thank you. Morning, gents um, and teachers. Just letting you know that um, we're going to start, we are actually recording this um, as we're going along. So if you've got any questions or you want to review it, you can review this uh, video anytime. It'll be put up as a YouTube link. And just to let you know that if we've got any questions, um, make sure that you jot them down. You can also ask your teacher to put them into the chat box and we can possibly answer them while um, uh, Tanya Anderson is actually speaking to you. Um, so I can access those. Otherwise we can have question time at the end and um, you can get your teacher to um, give the question and we'll try and answer as thoroughly as we can. So I'll hand it over to Tanya Andersich from VPG to present the induction to you. And you've all be received your paperwork, I presume. And I've also sent an email out with a resume builder from VPG, which is going to be so useful for you because you'll need to bring that resume with you to the interviews. And it's really important that you make sure that all that paperwork is clear, concise and completed before the interviews on the 24th or 25th of March. Thank you. Good morning, Year 10 students. My name is Tanya and I'm here today to present the Workplace Learning Program, program Induction. Okay, so who is VPG? VPG, we are a local non-for-profit youth organisation that has been operating in Cairns for over 20 years. We were initially founded as the only work experience um, provider here in Cairns. Our whole ethos at VPG is to support young people on their journey into the working world. We promote workplace learning as a valuable and rewarding insight into future job and career pathways. To date, VPG has coordinated over 25,000 placements over the last two decades. So we like to think that we are the experts in workplace learning here in Cairns. Our role in this program is to source your work experience placement and liaise with local employers. We will provide support during the program and we are the contact between the employer, the school and yourself throughout this program. Please note that the success of this program really does hinge on your active participation and planning in this program. All the information that we are going to go over today is listed in your program manual that you have been provided today. So please ensure that paperwork goes home with you today. You sit down with your family, read it so you understand the expectations of this program. 
Okay, so we're just going to go over some of the contacts through this program. So the school contact is Miss Helen Light, um, and she is your Vet and Careers Pathway Coordinator. And that is her contact number and email. I really would like to encourage you to make contact with Miss Light if you need any assistance with the work experience program requirements. If you need assistance with workplace, industry information and availability, please feel free to contact me at any time. Um, and that is my contact number and contact email. And just to reiterate, this information will be provided to you after the session so you can find these contact details. Okay, so let's talk about why we are going to participate in workplace learning. So for a lot of you, year 10 is the foundation year where you start to crystallise your ideas, your pathways and how you're going to set yourself up in senior schooling. This may be also your first entry into a workplace. That's why this may be a reality check for you. This is going to be your opportunity to road test a career and a job. To date, your cohort has been flagged that you'll be participating as a, a working person, having 10, sorry, 20 to 25 different careers and jobs in your lifetime. That's why it's really crucial to ensure that you start developing those transferable skills that are going to transcend the many different jobs and careers that you're going to have. So this is your opportunity to learn about the positive and the negative parts of the job. What do you like about that job? What do you dislike about that job? Because the reality is no matter what job or career that you're going to have, there's going to be some components that you like and there's going to be some that you dislike. We're wanting you to really ramp up those transferable skills and learn what it's like to be adaptable, have social, personal skills, social capabilities, critical thinking, problem solving, and using digital literacy outside of your normal home and school setting. So you'll learn different programs. You'll learn how employers um, problem solve. You'll learn how they adapt their personal skills to speak to many different stakeholders. This is your chance to further develop that. We're wanting you to obtain live careers information by asking your employers directly about their job. We want you to ask them, how do they get there? What did they study? What tips do they have for you to move forward if you were to pursue it as a career? We're hoping this opportunity will help you find out what courses and pathways would benefit you moving forward in your post-schooling um, pathways. We're hoping that this will help you build networks with local employers and contacts that could even potentially lead to employment. We always have wonderful outcomes from St Augustine's work experience program with many offers of part-time casual employment, um, school-based opportunities, as well as cadetships waiting for you once you finish your senior schooling. Also, we're hoping that this will help you build confidence as you'll be challenging, challenging yourself in a new environment and, and stretching out your social setting to meet new people. And most importantly, we're hoping that this experience will help you add more content into your resume and portfolio. We're wanting you to build a relationship and rapport with your host that may potentially end up being a referee on your resume. Okay, so here's a bit of a program timeline for you. So first of all, BPG will be conducting face-to-face -face interviews at the school on the 24th and 25th of March, which is term one, week nine, and we'll discuss a little bit further, more about that further. Another important milestone is placement delivery. So the 28th of July in term three, week three, is when you get to find out where you're going for work experience and what instructions will be provided at that time on how you need to proceed. Another important milestone is the placement dates, which is the 26th to the 20. 22nd to the 26th of August, which is term three, week seven. And please note those dates are compulsory. Okay, so let's talk about our three-step program procedure a little bit more in depth. So first of all is the interview. The interview is compulsory. So VPG must interview every single young person before we can move ahead and organise your placement. The interview is a 15-minute session that will be conducted here at school and you'll be provided with your time prior to the interview days. At the interview, you need to submit your application form that you've been given today, as well as a completed resume. We need those 15 minutes with each student to ensure that we meet you, 
we get a good understanding about who you are, your interests, and what workplaces and industries VPG will support you in in this program. We also let all our hosts, our employers in Cairns know that we do not place any students in work experience unless VPG has met them and have understood where they'd like to go for their placement. That is our guarantee to our hosts and our employers that we are supporting you the best we can by having met you and knowing where you'd like to go. Please note at the interview that BPG does take notes and we use those notes to assist us in organising your placement. The second procedure is the placement delivery, which is the 28th of July. So please note you'll be given full information at that time on where you're going, what you're wearing, what you need to do, the location and insurance paperwork. We don't need to stress about that step just yet. However, please note that every single young person will need to go visit their employer face-to-face -face before their placement commences to have all insurance paperwork signed. And the last step is simply you need to attend the placement every single day. Your sick policy, including COVID policy, will apply for that week of work experience. Okay, so we're gonna start talking about some industries um, for you to consider. So every year I do grapple with the idea of providing students with the list of industries because they take this as the list that they must pick their industries from. And that is not correct. Please note that these industries are just suggestions. Cairns to date has over 1000 careers available here locally. So there's many that are not listed here today. This is simply just to give you a bit of an idea of some of the industries that our students undertake work experience in. So these are areas like education, retail, construction, automotive, hospitality, veterinary science, administration, metal fabrication. So these industries here is what I would consider our core industries. And a core industry is an industry that is quite large, um, readily available here in Cairns, and that accepts a lot of work experience students. So these are some of those areas here locally that do take many work experience students throughout the year. Now, if you are interested in an industry that's not listed, that's okay. Please make sure that you note it on your forms and we will further discuss the availability of that industry as we move forward in this discussion. Okay, so here's a bit of a snapshot of what we call our limited placements. So our limited placements are simply areas that are more limited due to numerous reasons. They could be from popularity, that lots of young people want to undertake work experience in these industries, or that they may not be as many employers available here locally, or that some of these employers do require certain um, entry level quals before they would accept you for a work experience placement. So I'm gonna give you a couple examples of this. So the first one is information technology. We have many um, employers available here locally that take work experience um, students in IT. However, due to the nature of that industry being quite popular, at times it can become um, quite um, limited and competitive to get a placement in that, that industry. Another example is Allied Health. We have many providers, employers of Allied Health here locally that are very accepting of work experience students. But again, at times due to the popularity, there might not be as many spots available for those students who have requested that area. However, for places like architecture and engineering, there is a requirement that you would have some kind of entry level knowledge before that employer would be open to hosting you for work experience. So let's go to architecture. So to, to obtain a placement in architecture and to be able to, to participate in those duties, there is an expectation from the host that you would have um, be studying those relevant subjects or you might be aspiring to study that after school. So let's just say you might be studying graphics at school that would make you a good candidate to do placement in architecture. And you may have that very limited entry level knowledge of those design programs that you would need to use to participate in those tasks and duties in architecture. 
Another one is law. We have lots of um, solicitors, lawyers, barristers here in Cairns that are open to taking work experience students. However, the expectation would be is that you're studying those relevant subjects at school and you'll be doing well in subjects like English to make you a suitable candidate to do work experience there. So due to the nature and the competitiveness of these limited placements, BPG does need to stress that you do need to have a second and third preference available just in case we weren't able to place you in the limited spot. Um, reason being is that we have 135 year 10 students in this cohort competing and undertaking a placement during that one week. So that will be an indicator on why some of those spots may not be available due to the number of students participating in placement. Um, you have the availability to organise your placement direct with an employer if you're after a specific workplace, and we'll discuss how you can do that shortly. Um, lastly, I'd like to talk to you about industry areas that are not permitted. And there's a couple of reasons why they may not be permitted. First one is due to public, li insurance, public liability insurance will simply not cover these industry areas. This includes mining, tattoo parlours, nightclubs, security, um, abseiling, whitewater rafting, canoeing, diving and bungee jumping. So they are completely a no-go industry. The other industries of emergency services, um, working in the domestic and international airport or your psychology or psychiatry um, services are not permitted due to client confidentiality, unsuitability and being unavailable due to COVID impacts. So with the working at the domestic and international airport, um, airport um, uh, careers and pilot, air host, traffic controller, airport ground crew are not permitted. However, students are permitted to undertake work experience at general aviation, which is a separate site off the side of the domestic and international airport. This is where smaller um, uh, transport operators work from. You might have seen in uh, workplaces such as Hawker Pacific, Skytrans, so on and so forth, and they will offer workplace availability in aviation engineering only, or potentially a placement at Aviation Australia. So that is available for work experience. However, anything to do with the domestic and international airport um, is not permitted. Um, just to reiterate with our social welfare, social science industries of psychology, psychiatry, so on and so forth, these areas are absolutely not permitted for work experience due to client confidentiality. At times we've had students try to organise the placement at the front desk, but again, those kind of um, code of ethics are still bound for those working at front Front of, um, front of office staff. So if you are interested in one of these areas, but you know that you can't undertake a placement there, that's okay. Please send me an email or give me a call and I can discuss with you what other areas that you could do a placement in that would have those transferable skills. Okay, so we now need to start thinking about where you'd like to go for work experience, what you'd like to do and what kind of hours that you'll be working. So this is where you need to start thinking about, okay, I'm interested in this industry area and this is where I live. How am I going to get there? What kind of hours are they gonna work? What kind of uniform requirements I'm going to need to wear? This onus is back on you now to start thinking about this before you select your industries. So I'm gonna give you a couple of examples. Let's talk about being a chef. You might be interested in being uh, working in hospitality cookery. However, you need to know that chefs work odd hours. They may work a breakfast shift. They may work a dinner shift. And whatever hours that workplace works, you'll be provided those hours as well. Let's talk about being a mechanic or a diesel fitter. Most mechanics that I know work from start from anywhere between 6.30 to 7.30 in the morning. So if you're interested in that industry, you will need to be available to be able to work early morning shifts. Also, you need to think about, do I like to get dirty? Am I gonna be okay smelling chemicals all day? Let's talk about retail, especially during the COVID era. Retail workers clean a lot. Their whole role is to ensure that the retail space is clean, that merchandise is up to date and are greeting customers. So you'll be on your feet all day and cleaning. What about if you wanna be a barber or a hairdresser? Something to think about is that you'll be on your feet all day and you'll be making lots of coffee. So I just want you to now start thinking about what am I interested in? 
what industry am I looking at and what am I going to be doing and what kind of hours will I be working and would I be able to manage that personally? Now, also something to think about is that some industries have strict entry requirements. So they could be proof of vaccination or that you need to have a ticket requirement such as a white card. So with the proof of vaccination, any industries that have mandated a vaccine requirement would apply to you as the work experience student. So due to this requirement at the interview, VPG will be asking you, are you vaccinated? partially vaccinated or not vaccinated. So whatever status that you are, please note that we will need that information to be able to move forward to organise your placement in the most appropriate setting to your status. So be mindful though, if you are, for example, not vaccinated and you have asked for an industry that requires a vaccination, that is going to be a barrier for you. Also, please be mindful that any uniform requirements that the host has asked of you, you will need to sort out yourself. So that could be steel cap boots, business attire, high-vis gear. You will need to purchase these or borrow these to help you prepare for your work experience placement. In regards to a white card, those students who are interested in a placement in construction, as well as some engineering firms who go on to sites to do site visits, you'll be required to have a white card safety course qualification. What will happen with that is VPG will organise your placement in that industry, will let the skill know of that requirement, and they will let you know how you need to go a bit ahead to receive that qualification. Please note that any industries where you need to have proof of vaccination or proof of white card, you need to ensure that you have these on yourself each day on placement to show that proof. Something else to think about is your work hours. Please note that most employers on our books do not offer school hours unless you're working at a school. You will be expected to work at least eight hours a day. So please ensure that you understand that your commitment during that week of work experience may not be school hours. What we'd like to do is encourage you to prioritize workplace learning for that week because it's only for one week. It's an amazing opportunity that the school has allowed you to miss one week of learning, to participate in a different set of learning in a workplace to assist you in your career pathways this year. So please ensure that you prioritize this wonderful opportunity. Please note that employers will not pay you whilst on work experience, which we'll talk about further on. And please ensure that whilst work experience looks great on your resume and it does give you some life skills, it is a taster and it doesn't define your life path. Okay, let's talk about the application form that you should have in front of you right now. So this application form is really important. We use this piece of information as well as your resume and notes at your interview to help VPG match you with the most appropriate employer. So in that application form, you'll notice there is a client application form, form one, which we ask for personal details. The next page is our code of conduct and the next page is our privacy principles. With the client application form, this is where you give BPG detailed information. We ask for your contact details, your email. With your email, please note your school email as any correspondence that BPG has with you will likely be by email and we will be CCing you I'm CCing the school and a parent in all of our correspondence. Now, the first question on the application form is, can you list any pre-existing medical conditions and or medications that may impact your placement? Please note that VPG has to legally ask this question to ensure that VPG has a good understanding about who you are and how we can best match you with the most appropriate employer with these things in mind. Also, please note that any medical conditions or medications that may impact your placement, we are legally bound to let the employer know. Mm -hmm. And we also need to make a note of this on your insurance paperwork. However, with this information, this, is, this information provided is to help you to ensure that we have a good understanding of who you are. Um, is there any kind of situations or environments that are suited or not suited to you? And best way that we can move forward to ensure that we have an, ensure that you get a good placement. 
Below that section, we talk about um, industry areas and if you've arranged your own placement. Okay, so you have two options when participating in our program. So option one is VPG will organise a work experience placement oh. on your behalf. However, for us to do that, you need to nominate three different industries and make a note in the middle of that page. The reason we need three industries is we go back to our industry talk is that there's 135 of you participating in work experience just in that one week. And from historically with this school, a lot of you will be after those limited placement areas. It's due to these reasons that we need you to have some viable second and third options should your first choice not be available. However, I would just like to stress that this is your first entry into workplace learning here in year 10 and there will be opportunities for you to participate in further work experience as you enter your senior schooling years um, especially for those who are eager to get a placement that they would need for any university applications any school base that they need to um, get experience for and you could do that in your school holidays so please be mindful that if you do miss out on your first choice there will be some other opportunities available for you later down the road the other option for you is to find your own placement and you would write that information on the bottom of the page. If you arrange your own placement, please ask for full contact details as VPG will then contact that host and conduct our suitability and risk assessment audit. So please put down the business name, the contact details, and most importantly, who arranged the placement if it wasn't yourself. You may have a parent, a sister, sister or even a teacher arrange that placement for you. Please note that we do ask you at the time of the interview if you are participating in a placement with a parent or a relative because there could be some conflict of interests um, there if that was a, a business owned by a parent or relative. So I'll just give you an example of one that would not be permitted. Let's just say your dad is an electrician. He's a sole trader, as in it's only himself, and he wants to take you from work experience. Because he is the only person that can supervise you on placement, then that placement would not be permitted to go ahead because of that conflict of interest. However, because of that scenario, maybe your dad would be interested in taking another student from the cohort for work experience who he could supervise, and that way that conflict of interest wouldn't be an issue. However, let's just say that your parent works in a bigger organisation, let's say Cairns Regional Council, and there is someone else within that organisation that can supervise you for placement, then that kind of scenario is able to go ahead. Okay, I'm just going to quickly touch on the code of conduct. I need you to all thoroughly read through the code of conduct and sign at the bottom of this page. We do that at another time. We want you to do this so you understand that workplace learning is a privilege and understand the schools and the employer's goodwill by offering this placement opportunity to you. The code of conduct we simply would reflect the behaviour that is expected of you here at this school. So please ensure that you read it and you understand your um, requirements, especially around mobile phone usage and social media. Okay, let's talk about interviews. So VPG will be back on the 24th and 25th of March to conduct the face-to-face -face interviews here at school. We will discuss your three industry choices and why you have selected them. We will look at your current subjects and if you're appropriate for a placement in a limited area. Please note for those really sought after industries, VPG will look for the best candidates for those limited areas. So these candidates are those who have their forms completely filled out, who have their resume ready to go. They, their appearance is good. They can give us clear communication. They have great attitude at the interview and they have a really good entry level knowledge of the interview of the industry. Please note that if you are absent on the day of interviews, um, VPG will arrange another time to come back a week later to catch up on those who have missed the interviews. But if you missed the catch up session, any of those um, who have missed that will need to contact VPG and come to our office to have the interview. Because remembering that we can't move forward with your placement until you've had that face to face interview. Okay, so let's start talking about how we're going to get prepared. So I want to make sure that you fill out your forms, 
you have read the guide and you're ready for your interview. So that's being prepared for this program. Please now start researching workplaces and what duties you're likely to be doing in those um, workplaces before the VPG interview. So these are some tips that of questions that we will ask you at the interview. Please discuss the program with your family. I'd like to stress that this program is based on purely your active participation in this program and how much you give us. So if you have any questions or you need support, this is your time to reach out to the school and VPG for that support. We need this now and at the time of the interviews, as opposed to three months down the track when you get your information for your placement. Please choose areas that have those transferable skills, particularly for those of you who are interested in some industries that you now know are not available. Please ask as many questions as possible during your interview, show interest and be punctual for your interview because excuses for why you're late won't work in the workplace. I'd like to stress that use the interview as a mock workplace interview. Come in there, know your strengths, know what you're good at, and provide all your portfolio ready to go for that interview. Okay, so we're gonna to just touch on some program frequently asked questions that we always get. So a question that we frequently get is, can I request a placement in the defense force? So the answer to that is no. The reason being is that the defense force, and that would be here in Cairns, HMAS Cairns, um, Whilst those kind of sites do offer work experience opportunities for young people, in particular in year 10, those dates don't, those dates don't coincide with your school program. Also, VPG doesn't have the capacity to coordinate singular individual requests in the Defence Force. Instead, what the Defence Force does is that whatever base has a program running, they'll open that up online where you need to fill out your application form. And if you're successful, then you'll undertake a placement during those different dates. Another question we get is, can I do a placement at Cairns Hospital? Yes, however, there are a few restrictions. So the first restriction is, is that year 10 students will only have access to allied health placements at Cairns Hospital. Allied health placements include physio, occupational therapy, speech therapy, sometimes pharmacy, nutrition, dietitian, to give you an example. However, due to the current COVID restrictions and caps on visitors, generally speaking, the hospital would only likely go ahead with the work experience placement request if you have arranged that placement directly. So what that would mean is that you would likely need to have contacts or know someone at the Cairns Hospital who would be able to pull those strings for you to organise a placement there. If that is you, then please have a chat to VPG by sending us an email to let us know your contacts at the school, at, sorry, at the hospital and how you could proceed in organising a placement there. Another question we frequently get is, will I get paid? So with the work experience program, this is a voluntary program, as in you will not get paid for the, your time in that workplace. The reason being is that, first of all, with the insurance cover, um, you're not permitted to get paid because it's a volunteer-based insurance cover. Additionally, that workplace is offering their goodwill to you and to the school by having you in there for one week. It takes a lot of time effort and resources for a workplace to accommodate a work experience student. They have to have a supervisor with you at all times and ensure they meet their legalities of that placement. So that is why that you will not get paid. However, there are scenarios where you might be given certain things that are permitted. So for example, you're working in a workplace where they offer meals as part of your placement every single day. So then you'll be permitted to have those meals. Or you might be given a shirt for undertaking placement there. And at the end of the week, you'll be permitted to keep that shirt. So they're kind of goodwill offerings from the workplace that we are happy for you to accept, but you're not able to accept any money for participating in a placement there. 
Another question is, what if I'm a boarder? How will I travel to and from the workplace? So the school will generally support you in undertaking your transport to and from the workplace. However, there are some restrictions in your um, transport options. So generally speaking, BPG will try to organise work experience placements for boarders around the CBD area. We generally aren't able to place you past the beaches or south side. Um, or preferably, we like to place students close enough to the school so you could walk there every day for work experience. Now, what if you hate the industry by day two? Okay, so some of you will be so adamant that you want to work in a certain industry, you really, um, you know, have, have had an interest in it for a long time, you turn up on day one, after day one, you don't like it. And I'll give you an example of one that has happened in the past is working at a dentist. We have lots of young people wanting to be a dentist, they go on site, they sit down for the day, understanding that they don't have the qualifications to do the work, so they observe and they take notes. And day two, they decided that they hate it. Well, if that's the case to VPG and to the school, that is still, still a successful placement because you now know that industry is not for you. However, you will still have to participate in the full five days of work experience with that host to truly understand what it's like to work there and to ensure that you know that you want to cross it off your list, okay? So if that's you by day two that you don't like it, you will still need to proceed with your placement because at VPG, any placement, if you like it or dislike it, dislike it is a successful placement because you now know that you can either move forward or move on. Can you request a placement outside of Cairns? Absolutely. However, BPG, we only have amazing relationships with our employers here locally. We don't have those relationships with our employers outside of Cairns. So if you want a placement outside of Cairns, particularly for those who are boarders and you might want to go back to your hometown to participate in a placement, you will need to organise a direct placement or BPG can give you some hints and ideas of some previous employers in those areas that may be open to taking a work experience placement. Another question we get is, can I wear my formal uniform to the VPG interview? Absolutely. We would highly encourage all of you to think of this interview as a workplace interview and turn up to your interview in your formal uniform with your application form and your resume ready to go. Do you need a cover letter as well? Um, if you would like to provide VPG with a cover letter, then we would absolutely accept it and use that information to help us move forward and organise a placement with you. Remembering that we use the application form, the resume, as well as our notes at interview to best match you with an employer. So any additional content and information about yourself that you can give to VPG will purely benefit you in this endeavour. And do I have to attend the full days of work experience? Absolutely. You need to attend the full five days of work experience because it's compulsory. Any of those who miss work experience during those days, the, the policy here at the school would apply. There is a couple exceptions to the rule with that, is that for some industries that um, there may be only a requirement that you would work for four days because that industry may be closed on one particular day. So I'll give you an example of that. So let's just say you're interested in being a barber. A lot of barber shops don't open on a Monday, so you would likely only work Tuesday through to Friday. However, with those kind of scenarios, what we would do is the employer would likely provide extra additional hours hours during the week so you can make up for that one day loss. So for example, you might be asked to work a Thursday evening to get a good glimpse of what it's like to work in that industry. Another example is maybe construction. We have a lot of construction employers who might knock off early on a Friday um, due to working full full days, um, the Monday through to Thursday. So again, that if that employer does knock off early on that Friday afternoon, the expectation is that you would also finish at that time. But any students who have a placement that's less than five days, that information will be discussed with the school and we will receive full parent um, permission before we would go ahead with that kind of scenario. Okay, so we're going to give now all the classrooms an opportunity to have a quick chat to see if they want to write up a question via the chat portal that we can answer here now.
Any, no, we can unmute. Let's just. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you could Thank you very much. I will let you know as soon as I'm on that. Okay. Well, I'm just going to unmute you um, if I can. If I can. Seems to be all, yes. So they can all, all up. So you can actually all unmute yourselves now if you have any questions. Is that any possibilities? I've tried to mute all, allow participants to unmute themselves, yes. So I've allowed you to be able to unmute yourselves. Just a, a quick follow-up from um, what Tanya was talk, talking about as well. So your interview times will be posted the week before um, that you're going to the interviews. What I'll do is I'll send an email to you and I'll also send it to Mr. Gregory so he can place it up in Teams. You'll need to make sure that you're there ready for your interview at least five minutes before. Have all your resume um, ready along with your paperwork. And before you leave your class, can you let your teacher know that you're going to the interview and that you will return in another, say, 20 to half an hour? or else make sure that you're ready for the next class. If you're in between periods, between period one and two, or between three and four, just make sure that they know that you won't be coming back and you'll be proceeding to your next period or, or however it takes. And make sure that it's all printed, ready to go. Everything's finalized and you've got everything organized. If you need a hand with building your resume, come and see me anytime, just drop in and see me. That's not a problem and happy to sort you out with that. Uh, just a point from me, you will have to handwrite your application, yeah? That needs to be done neatly, yeah? You, it's very important uh, that you hand in anything handwritten that is neat and you, 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 straight away um, the person that's interviewing you will get an impression on you depending on uh, the, the quality of your handwritten work, okay? So that's really important. Uh, I think we're pretty much done. Yeah. And if you, if students, if you have any questions now, you're welcome to come down to the boardroom and ask any pertinent questions. It's, it's not a problem with, with that. We'll stay here um, for the moment and then just uh, otherwise come and see me if you have any further questions. Don't forget white card. It was supposed to be handed in yesterday. Uh, I think the class is almost full. So if you are thinking about doing your white card, you need to get it to me yesterday. So just make sure it's all done. And you have your USI as well, and happy to sort out your Louis number or ask your homeroom teachers. Uh, one last thing. I only had 32 people have voted so far for the SRC. Uh, so if you need to do that, please do it as soon as possible. And um, one last thing, um, Tanya, thank you very much we, uh, for all the good work that you do with, with, uh, with regard to work placement at St. Augustine's College. It's very much appreciated. Yeah, okay. thank you. Great. And a great um, induction into the work, work experience program. Thank you. Thanks, boys.